Wasabi Wallet. I'm fairly private. What's up, everyone? Ben with the BTC Sessions here, and this is your daily session. Huddle that Bitcoin. Before we dive into the news, of course, shout out to sponsors of the show, Ledin.io. This is where you can use your Bitcoin for a few different services, one of which is a Bitcoin savings account where you can earn Bitcoin on your Bitcoin paid in Bitcoin. Uh, You can also check out their Bitcoin backed loans. This is where you use your Bitcoin as collateral to secure a Canadian or US dollar loan. So I find this particularly useful if you need to get your hands on dollars, but you're worried about selling your Bitcoin at a bad time, you think it might go up in the future, and you don't think you will be able to buy back the same amount, well, this could be an option for you uh, where your Bitcoin sits in a dedicated auditable account. So you can always check that the money's there, um, but it allows you to get a loan in dollars and then pay it off at a later date. And finally, if you're a huge Bitcoin bull, you can check out their B2X offering. That's where you can gain double the exposure to the price of Bitcoin. If you want to check out any of those, there's a link down below. And actually, if you opt to get a loan, well, then they will uh, give you a credit of an additional $50 worth of Bitcoin. And secondly, if you're into Bitcoin, then uh, you're probably a security conscious person, at least hopefully you are. And one of the things that I use to help with that a little bit is NordVPN. So what this does is it helps mask your IP address, it encrypts your browsing data, and it has a bunch of other added benefits, one of which that I really enjoy is unblocking geoblock content. So if you can't access some content in your area, you can simply change your designated country of origin in NordVPN. VPN and it will look like you're from there and boom, that content is unlocked. And with that, uh, you can check out the link down below. There's a special deal on right now where you save 84%. Last I checked, it was about $3.49 a month. So pretty damn good. With that, let's dive into the news. Uh, So it is Black Friday still, uh, although late by the time this is airing, there are still some deals to be had online. Uh, Now, you guys know that I'm not huge on spending my Bitcoin, but uh, there are some good things in relation to Bitcoin that are on sale that you can always take a look at grabbing. And there are also, if you're doing some online shopping, there are some ways to possibly even earn Bitcoin while you go ahead and shop. Uh, So this was an article from newsbtc.com. They brought up a few good uh, little offerings here that I figured I'd mention. So Ledger, uh, they do hardware wallets. They are doing an offering 30% site-wide. So all across their website, everything is 30% off. So pretty solid. They all Also, there is a deal from Trezor where they're doing uh, 30% off using a promo promo code TRZ30. Uh, And then the Keep Key is only $5 right now. But I will say that uh, it's of the like major brands uh, like Trezor, Ledger, and Keep Key. I would say it's my least favorite. I just find the UI is pretty minimalistic and boring and it's... Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, you know, I, I do appreciate the, the, the founders that originally created it. It was of course later, uh, acquired by Shapeshift, but still, um, if you're going to spring for one of these here, I would, I, I tend to lean towards the Trezor because it's open source and for new users, it may be a little bit more user friendly, but also be sure to check out cold card because they've got deals on their website right now for black Friday. So you can get discounts on the cold card. So if you're a little bit more privy to how Bitcoin works and you're down for like a really awesome hardware wallet that compromises really nowhere, then check out the cold card. That's, that's solid. Uh, there's some stuff about trading view. I'm not really a trader, so whatever. Uh, a couple books on sale if you're checking out Amazon for Black Friday. So there's some books that are listed at 20% off or more. One of the ones I just finished, Bitcoin Billionaires. So that's from the same guy who wrote The Social Network, or rather the book that was adapted into the movie The Social Network about Mark Zuckerberg. Well, this is the follow-up to that of the, the Winklevoss twins and their foray into Bitcoin. I thought it was excellent, and it was cool to just read about some of the people that I've been around, met, and and just you see them in this light. It's it's cool. It's a cool piece of Bitcoin history. Uh, there is crypto assets. I 
looking back, hindsight is twenty twenty, but I'm, I'm not really a big fan. Uh, I think it gives way too much credence to uh, coins that are that seem to be worth something then that are not now. The Bitcoin Standard, obviously. Uh, you know, if you haven't read it yet, well, here's your chance to get it for on the cheap. So go ahead, check that out on Amazon. Um, now, if you are do, doing some uh, shopping, if you're in the U.S., something to check out is Lolly. So Lolly is a Chrome pr- plugin. It has plugins for other browsers, but basically, it gets you sats back at a whole bunch of different. Uh, merchants. So check out uh, things like Best Buy, Macy's, Walmart. There's a whole bunch of them. So go over, check out Lolly. Um, and then also Fold app, which I talked about recently on the show, which has a mobile app where you can buy gift cards with either fiat or Bitcoin. Um, in both cases, you get sats back when you're purchasing those gift cards. And for Black Friday, they have deals where those sats back rewards are much more. So I saw some that were like 8%. Um, so th- I mean, there's there's a fair amount that you can get back if you were already planning on doing some shopping and needed gift cards anyways. So uh, with that, I'll kind of leave the, the uh, Black Friday. I, I think some of these might even extend into like Cyber Monday, all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, Take a peek around. Let's move on. We're going to go on a bit of a roller coaster here of of regulatory ups and downs and yays and nays. Uh, so this article from Bitcoin is they're talking about how German banks could s- soon be able to store Bitcoin and provide crypto services. And so what this means is right now, in order for a bank to do something like that, where they would be providing a way for customers to purchase anything in relation to Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, anything like that, uh, they would would need to be going through like third party custodians and and have other other people involved well there's going to be a change here so basically if the states green, uh, green light the proposal, German citizens will be able to hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other digital currencies directly in banks. Banks will provide online banking solutions for the whole range of assets like stocks, bonds, and cryptocurrencies. This means that crypto holders will access their funds at the touch of a button. Um, yeah, so it's it's funny because like the 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 banks are actually in favor of this too, which you would think would be not super kosher on their end but i mean realistically they it's a new product for them to be able to market and that's where some of the concern from consumer experts is coming because they're worried that banks don't have good practices when it comes to marketing and selling their products that may not be in their client's best interest and i've got to say they've got a point here because like in my head i i lean heavy bitcoin Obviously, I think that's what's important. I think pretty much everything else is noise. But in the context of a bank trying to market as many new products as possible, you just know they're going to be putting together bundles of shit coins. They don't care what they are and they just mix them in and swap them in and out. And with the ups and the downs of the market, they'll be bringing in new ones and getting rid of old ones. And it's just... I feel like it's rife for a total clusterfuck that could screw a lot of people. Um, But in like a crazy bull market, people may not realize until the next bear run happens and, you know, X amount of their portfolio was sitting in stuff other than Bitcoin and they get totally wrecked. Uh, So I don't know. In general, I guess it's a good, it's favorable as a whole, meaning that like there's not, hey, let's ban everything, but there's still some kinks to be worked out. And of course, as always, there's the risk, there's the counterparty risk of storing with somebody. Um, so uh, if somebody wasn't going to get exposure to Bitcoin in the first place, and this is the only way that they would do it was through like a banking product that was like bundled in with a mutual fund or something, then I suppose that's better than nothing. But in general, like if you're if you're tech conscious enough and you can hold your own Bitcoin, then probably not a bad idea. So some from something favorable out of Germany to uh, something that might have uh, some Bitcoiners in Russia a little panicky, there's rumors going around that Russia might consider a ban on using crypto as a means of payment. So you wouldn't be able to buy goods or services or anything like that. You wouldn't be able to run an online store and accept things like Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrencies if this were to go through. Um, 
it's it's interesting. I don't know how they would enforce this, but even in this in in the rumors, they're saying that it would pretty much be unenforceable except for a handful of people that they happen to catch, and those people would be made major examples of to dissuade people from using uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. They even say that uh, so. It could be that criminal penalties could carry terms of five to eight years in prison, which is insane. Um, So the funny thing, the thing that I found the most hilarious uh, is that they're talking about they're worried that it's being used for crime. In, in Russia, they're worried that cryptocurrencies are being used for illicit activities, and that's the reasoning behind this. It, it sounds a lot like 2014, 2015, um, and like, let's be real, is, is cryptocurrency the most corrupt thing happening in Russia? <laughs> anyway, so let's move on. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to... S- point a finger at here and we we reached uh we we spoke about this i believe last week a little bit but there's a canadian investment firm called 3iq and so they just got the go ahead that they can create a fund on the canadian stock exchange so you might see it on the tsx and they're actually pushing to get this launched maybe by even the end of the year or early like in january february of next year um so they've already know they've got the approval to do this as far as my understanding goes and uh so what they're doing now is they're actually doing like a regulated ipo if you don't know what an IPO is, don't immediately get a bad taste in your mouth because you're thinking ICO. ICOs were trash because there were no guarantees. You were buying a useless token that represented nothing and had no strings attached to it whatsoever. And people were just, you know, at the shitcoin casino. This, the IPO, the way it would work is they raise as much money as they can. Their goal is a hundred million plus. Um, but again, they'll have to see what market demand is. And then that money goes goes to purchase Bitcoin, which would be held in the custody of Gemini Trust, which is, again, the Winklevoss twins out of New York. So they would be the custodians for that. Um, so it'd be like deep cold storage or, or however Gemini goes about it. Um, and then people would be able to then, this is mo- of most interest to funds like hedge funds, index funds, um, uh, even even like mutual funds, basically investment firms that would bundle it in with with like a, a, a retirement fund or something like that. There's a lot of different options. And right now, none of those funds are allowed to get anything into their fund that is not a regulated product. So they couldn't just be like, yeah, we have exposure to Bitcoin because there's no option for them to buy Bitcoin in a regulated way, whereas this opens that up. So as I was alluding to in the German bank case, so there's a couple things to think about this. One, for those that never would have gained exposure to Bitcoin in any way had they only been able to just buy it directly themselves and have to deal with custody, people that wouldn't never have done that, well, now they are very likely going to have an option soon where they can just be like, hey, like I've got my mutual fund, but can I go with a product that also has some allocation or some exposure to the price of Bitcoin as well? Uh, So now all of a sudden that's a possibility. And I imagine a number of funds will jump at this to at least have a small allocation of that. Uh, It would in my opinion, be stupid not to have that exposure with the potential upside and the minimal downside. Like you could have 1% of a fund with Bitcoin, but with the potential upside of Bitcoin, that could propel your your fund way higher than others, even if it's limited to a small downside. Um, so it's like this asymmetric reward. Um, so I, I'm very interested to see this how this happens. Um, uh, 3IQ is the company. There's a, a good interview that was on Bloomberg with uh, Fred Pye. Oddly enough, as I was looking into this, 
I realized I know him. I mean, not like personally well, but a couple of years back, we did an event here in Calgary called the Bitcoin Rodeo. And we had a whole bunch of people out. Uh, Safedine came out. Francis Pouliot came out to speak. Vortex was here. Um, Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister. Uh, who else was? Ken Bozak was out for it. Like there's a ton of people here. And Fred was one of the guys on stage. And so he has been, he was actually instrumental in getting uh, gold as available on the stock market in the form of ETFs and whatever. He was instrumental in that in the early days, trying to get that allowed. And so it only makes sense that he would be the one to push forward digital gold. So uh, congrats to Fred. Uh, I'm, you know, good for you. You're, you're pushing stuff forward. And again, like it's, it's this dichotomy where it's like, well, there's people that would have never gotten exposure to it and, and never, you know, had that potential upside. And then at the same time for hardcore Bitcoiners like myself, and I imagine a lot of the people watching this show right now, uh, you guys are like, I need my cold card. I need to mix with Wasabi. I need to like make sure everything's on lock. And, and that is fantastic. And I agree with you and you should continue doing that because that's, that's what I'm going to do. But, uh, Looking at this, I see this as a positive because it gives an option to people that maybe are not on our level, I suppose. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, it just it it kind of adds liquidity to the market, um, and over time, that hopefully contributes to an upside to the price, but also less crazy volatility over time as funds like this um, come to fruition, and you have more long term holders, and yeah, so. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think of this whole 3IQ thing um, and the approval for it to be listed on the stock market. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to hear all your thoughts. Uh, so I'm going to wrap that up today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, hit like, subscribe, and share. Always hit that share button. It is great to have more people watching. Uh, if you want to help the show in another way, sponsors are down below, Ledin and Nord. Also, be sure to check out Wasabi Wallet. They are great, as I've mentioned before. Uh, it's nice to have a little bit of financial privacy with your Bitcoin, and Wasabi Wallet can help you accomplish that. And finally, if you really like what you saw, you can drop me a Bitcoin Lightning Network tip at my tipin.me page. With that, I'm out. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you on, I guess, Monday for your daily session.